On the last episode, we discussed how technology has advanced us in all of these years. But this one, I want to do a little bit differently. And I want to show how from 1997 till, what are we now, 2020, almost 2021, how valet parking is different than it was back then. Now, the first one might seem like a duh, but remember 23 years is a lot of time, almost 24 years, and technology has changed quite a bit. One of those ways is a cell phone. Before a cell phone, we actually had office lines that we had to take all of these calls. I did have a cell phone and I think I bought a cell phone back in 1994, 1995, but it was very expensive. Now, any of you that remember, we had anytime minutes and that was something that was kind of rare. Right now, everything is unlimited plans, but before that, in the world of valet park, or at least with my plan, we had free minutes after 9 p.m. So after 9 p.m., we made a ton of phone calls because it was free. I remember I had a plan back in the day that the first 60 seconds were free. So if someone called me, I would talk really quick and within 60 seconds, I would hang up because it was free. Beyond that, it went, it got more expensive than that and we didn't really want to deal with that. So cell phones, which you just heard ding right now, those were luxuries that we didn't have before. And um, when I first hired valets, I had their home number and if they had the luxury, we had a, um, they had a cell phone number. So we had the home number and a cell phone number. And a lot of our valets, like I'll give a shout out to Kenny. I still have Kenny's home phone number locked into my phone. Now, whether he still has a home phone or not, or just cell phone, because personally, even in my own household, I don't even have a home phone. I just have strictly cell phone. And I think that's the way it is across the board. So cell phones were not around in the beginning. And that's a true advancement at where we're at right now. I remember back in the day, I used to have to leave voicemails on people's home phones and hope that they give me a call when they got back from whatever they were doing. So that's a luxury that we have now that we didn't have back then. Now, the next luxury that we have now that we didn't have back then was email. Well, duh, why? Well, who didn't have email? Back in the day, emails didn't come out until probably 1995, 96, and they didn't really become prevalent until the 2000s. But before that, what we do a lot with our emails, we're able to email invoices, which is great because we can send them off and there's documented proof. Back in the day, we used to have to print it out, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it and mail it. And we actually still today in 2020 have some restaurants that only accept invoices by mail. They don't want email and they don't actually communicate us via email, which is pretty weird, but it still happens. So they're kind of an older restaurant and they're just kind of old school with the way they do things. So these are some of the things, but emails is, are great. We love emails because for us, it's documented proof. So if there's any kind of dispute on something that happens, we can show that we emailed something on this day to this person at this time. And usually that's, it's kind of a good way of having proof. Same thing for valets. I can send them out messages. They could sit there and say, oh, I didn't know. We can look at our emails and show that it was sent on this day. Please check your junk mail and make sure you received it. So emails, another thing that we have now that we didn't have when we first started the company. The next thing we take for granted so much and absolutely I love it because I remember back in the day we didn't have this, but what we have today that's such a blessing is GPS and navigation. A lot of the younger people don't remember when there wasn't a time when that stuff didn't exist. But what we had to do back when I lived in California, I used to have, there was something called a Thomas Guide, which was a big thick book and we had to put the address in and it would get us to the street and you had to use common sense. It was basically a portable map of Los Angeles and that's how we got around. When I first moved to Atlanta, <clears throat> I remember we used to do private parties when I worked for another valet company and they, I used to have to call them over the phone and I would have to write down, go up 400, get off at exit four, turn left, go to the flower stand, turn right, go to this place, turn left, and then go into the neighborhood. That was insane, but this is what we had to do and we still weren't late. Now valets have navigation and still they managed to show up late to work. Oh, I got lost. That's BS. Or my phone didn't work or something like that. So these are things that we had now that we didn't have then and it's so much more time efficient. Remember, a lot of this stuff is usually breaks down for the efficiency of time and this is one of the things that we love so much. But these are some of the things that we didn't have that 
we now have that make our job so much easier. Of course, a lot of this ties into technology, but I have a few more that will give you a better example of what I'm talking about. Now, this next one seems like a no brainer, but considering I did not get this until the year 2000, which was exactly 20 years ago, what did we do for the first three to four years we were in business? And that is a website. We did not have a website when we started. And when we actually got a website in like 1999, 2000, we were one of the first companies to actually do it. I was investing into the point of having a website. What did we do before the website? Yellow pages. I remember those yellow pages, those big, thick yellow books where the logo was let your fingers do the walking. I know it sounds corny, but that's what we had to do. How did we advertise in the yellow pages? Yeah, we can have a little simple small line like this that said prestige valet services and our phone number, but are they gonna call us? So no, we had to pay more money to get like a bigger ad that was the size of a business card. And those were surprisingly not cheap. You had to pay for a monthly and the fee was between $300 for a few lines up to, I remember at the end, I had a business card size with our little advertisement with our logo and everything. That was $700 a month to advertise in the yellow pages. Now remember the yellow pages only comes out once a year. So if you didn't pay for those other months, they literally had mafia type people come after you to get their money and they were not playing around. So when the opportunity came to build a website, generate that website and pass that inf uh, website out, then I went, I was all for it. So I was so excited about it and that's what we did. So what superseded the yellow pages? Google. And even before Google, there was Yahoo and we'll talk about that in a minute. But our website was phenomenal. I loved it. It advanced us so much more than you would never believe. Now the final one is going to be, as I just mentioned, Google slash Yahoo. Google is the powerhouse now. Everything is Google based. Everybody loves Google. But before Google, there was Yahoo. Before Yahoo, what was it? There was another one. I can't remember what it was. And it was so primitive. It was like an encyclopedia. Encyclopedias were our version of Google back in the 80s. And I know that I just dated myself so bad. But there was another company that came out, Prodigy, I think that's the name of it. Prodigy had CDs. And the CDs were basically electronic um, encyclopedias. And right now, um, Yahoo was more advanced. It was now more digital on command and then Google just blew it out of the water. So Yahoo and Google were the companies in the early 2000s, I think, that started. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. So I am correct. I had to check some data, but it was 2000 when Google came out. Now here's a fun fact. Yahoo was the powerhouse. Yahoo actually tried to buy Google for, I think, I think Google won at five billion dollars, but I think Yahoo offered them three billion and they said, no, we think we're worth five billion. Today, Google is worth $870 billion and Yahoo just got acquired by, I think Verizon for like 4 billion. So it's just funny how the tables have turned. Yahoo's not really worth anything anymore. And if they were able to pony up that extra money, they would be a powerhouse with Google. But that's kind of a fun fact. But Google, we absolutely love. I cannot say much enough about it. Just like I said in my previous video, there was an example where the lady said her uh, screen went black inside of her BMW. I Googled it and they gave me the response that let me know that this was a common problem and I had that answer in about 60 seconds. There was another case years ago where we broke a mirror on a Toyota Tundra. The mirror cost a thousand dollars because it was a brand new 1794 edition. So if I went to the dealership, it was going to cost fifteen hundred dollars to replace it. One of our valets worked part-time at the Toyota dealership, so got us the mirror for $800, and I was able to put it in for free. But I had one shot to replace this mirror because I had to tell the customer that I was capable of going over there, swapping out their mirror, and avoiding going to the dealership. So I got on Google, I pulled up a video, and it showed me how to replace that mirror. So when I went over there, I knew exactly what screws to pull out, what hidden screws were there, and I was able to replace the mirror in about 30 minutes. So I was excited. Google saves us a lot of money. I cannot say enough positive things about Google. So please let me know what you think about this video and how valet parking has changed from 1997 until now the year 2020. Thank you very much. 
Have a great day.